Hi everyone and uh, thanks for tuning in and welcome to this Byteball Usathon presentation video. It's the first Byteball Usathon we've ever hosted. Uh, it's arranged by uh, the community of Byteball. My name is Casper, uh, also known as Punctured on the Byteball Slack, and uh, I am the main organizer of the Byteball Usathon. This usathon is organized by the Byteball community in general, but in close cooperation with the student council at the university. If you have any questions at all, go visit uh, La Casita, I think it's called. You have to forgive my pronunciation, I'm not fluent in Spanish at all. Um, you can also send them an email or contact them any way you're used to. We are very thankful for the Student Council's help, as well as uh, Mr. Castaneda's support of this contest. Uh, this presentation will contain links to the documentation, to the rules, uh, and also we will make the presentation publicly available. This means that you can always return and click into this video to watch or re-watch the, the presentation to the key features, or you will be able to find the useful links. Participants are, of course, also welcome to join the Byteball community Slack. Uh, there will be provided links uh, for this later on in this presentation. So here are an overview of some of the very important links that you should know about. Uh, the first, of course, uh, the official website of Byteball. It's byteball.org. This is where you can download uh, the wallet, uh, you can find links to the wiki site uh, and various other information sources. Uh, so far there is no iOS version available of the wallet. Uh, it's actually already made but it's not available at the Apple uh, App Store yet. There is uh, this iOS version but you'll have to do a lot of tinkering to get it to, to work. So. I definitely recommend you start using it uh, either on an Android phone or on a Windows platform. You can also use it on various Linux builds. The wiki contains uh, a ton of information about the Byteball platform. Um, this is of course the link, it's quite easy to remember, it's uh, wiki.byteball.org. Um, and this is one of the best sources of information about the Byteball platform. It contains a lot of features, so uh, this is probably a place you will want to return to every now and then to check out how features work, which features are available, or uh, simply to, to find other useful information. This is uh, also the place that we decided to host the official Usathon page, uh, the page created specifically for this contest, and where you will find names of all the teams and the details uh, of other teams that signed up. Okay, so let's get down to what this is really all about, the Byteball platform and all the features it has. I'll give you a, a brief introduction to some of the key features uh, of the Byteball platform here. Mainly the, the custom tokens, the smart contracts, the oracles, the text coins, the chatbots and ICO tools. And if you're not used to crypto cryptocurrencies at all, you don't need to be afraid at all. It's basically really, really simple. That's one key feature of the Byteball platform. It manages to, to make complex things really really simple so uh, don't give up yet uh, I'll walk you through a brief uh, introduction to some of these tools uh, and hopefully at the end uh, you'll be able to use these tools to create your own use cases for the projects you want to enter to the Byteball usathon first we have the social tokens or the custom tokens. Uh, the Byteball platform allows you to create your own tokens. It's, it doesn't require you to be able to uh, develop code or, or, or uh, program to the platform like you might know from Ethereum platform. In Byteball, you, it's actually just uh, a few clicks and uh, some, some naming and then you're ready to go and you have your own uh, token. 
it's uh, super easy to transfer tokens or the bytes. Uh, the bytes is the, the the native currency of the Byteball platform. Um, with about uh, one fortieth of a cent uh, in U.S. dollars, it's it's basically free. Um, the tokens can be limited in various ways, uh, and I'll leave it to you to discover the, the various possibilities there is with the tokens. But uh, that's just one of the first uh, things that, that this platform has to offer. Secondly, uh, and this is really a cornerstone of the, of the Byteball uh, platform, the smart contracts. And when I say smart, contracts, I really mean smart. They are not only uh, conditional payments, uh, but they are actually created in a way that makes it human readable. So you don't need to, again, be able to, to program code or read code, uh, and you don't have to trust other developers uh, creating code that, that doesn't break or doesn't contain any vulnerabilities. You can actually do uh, smart contracts simply by uh, selecting various conditions. They might not be as complex or uh, Turing complete, as it's called, as the Ethereum platform. But uh, the, the, the uses for this platform's smart contracts are vast. And I really encourage all of you to uh, go explore them. It's, it's really uh, uh, an easy thing to do. You can use smart contracts to create these conditional transfers. Say, I want to transfer uh, one dollar worth of bytes to you, uh, but only if you also transfer one dollar worth of your token to me. I can then create a smart contract, deposit my one dollar of bytes, uh, and as soon as you deposit one dollar worth of your token, the contract will then release it and, and perform what's called an atomic swap. Uh, both parties get their funds or tokens, at the very same time. And it's not possible for one party to cheat on another. And most importantly, there's no third party involved in this. So it's, it's a trustless design um, by, by definition. Uh, and when I say it's fairly simple, if then else, it's of course uh, also uh, possible to create very complex scenarios. Uh, some of the, the already existing betting sites use these smart contracts and of course they contain a, a, a wide, wide range of different conditions allowing the, the betting company to take back the money should a, a match get cancelled or if something weird happens uh, the funds won't get lost. Uh, so contracts need to contain a lot of different uh, conditions allowing either party of the contract to withdraw the funds. And of course, also the main functions, uh, the main conditions of the contract. Oracles, uh, you can't really have smart contracts without some form of integration into the real world. So the way Byteball does this is to provide so-called oracles. It's uh, a, a third party, but a uh, probably a, a, a website or some, some external source that both party of a contract agrees on will be able to deliver the truth. Uh, for sports betting uh, contracts, this would of course be some kind of a match uh, detail provider. Um, for a flight delay insurance uh, it contract, it would obviously be uh, the, the flight delays uh, website of uh, the airlines. So oracles are feeders of data to, to the Byteball platform. And these contracts, uh, will, uh, when created, they will listen for this uh, oracle. As soon as the oracle sends uh, a, a data feed, it will react to that. And the contract will then, depending on the, the conditions in the contract, release the funds either to one party or the other. Should the event occur that the oracle remains silent, uh, let's say the, the flight delay website uh, suddenly uh, explodes and doesn't provide the information about a certain flight, then of course it would require you to have created a contract that also took this into consideration. So in case the, the, the flight delay oracle didn't post 
the, the actual departure time of the flight uh, and it didn't uh, for a week, then it should, the contract should be made so it releases the funds to either of the parties. The very important part here is that the oracles can be actual users. It doesn't have to be uh, data feeds coming from the internet or somewhere else. You can have one party of a contract providing the data to two other parties of a contract. And actually there's been a, a small video created to show you just how this works. Um, and hopefully this will work. Um, You'll just have to allow me a brief second here. Let's see. I don't think we have sound right now, but it's, I can take you through what happens here. This is the father's wallet. Uh, he then wants to send some bytes to his daughter but only provided that she does the chores. He then picks her address, chooses the amount that he wants to reward his daughter for doing the chores, 10 megabyte, and then clicks bind condition. As you can see here, the conditions are chosen simply by clicking and selecting various fields. And after 48 hours, this contract will expire and the fund will be returned to the file. That's another really important part of this Byteball platform. It's super difficult actually to, to, to have your money lost. Now let's see what happens if, uh, if the daughter here tries to spend the money. Um, as you can see, she has 10 megabyte waiting for her in a smart wallet. She can click it and watch the conditions. And of course, what should happen when she tries to send the funds without her mother having actually posted a data feed about her having done the chores, it should fail. And as you can see, she cannot send the payment. But then she does the chores And her mother confirms that the daughter did the chores and she does so by sending a signal or a data feed into the, the Byteball platform. And this data feed name is actually the name defined by the father in the contract. And Yes, she did her chores now. <clears throat> this will then get recorded into the, the Byteball platform or the, uh, the distributed database, so to speak. And now Joe's contract will be released. She'll be able to actually use the funds or uh, send the funds from the contract to her own wallet. As you can see, the transaction now went through, minus a slight change of fee. So that's basically how smart contracts work. Uh, it, it proves that uh, you don't have to be able to program stuff to be able to tap into other websites, APIs, to, to uh, feed data into the platform. You can actually just send these data uh, feeds directly from your wallet. Another super important feature of the Byteball platform is the text coins. Um, actually, Byteball was the very first platform to introduce the so-called text coins. Uh, and it's a way to send funds from your Byteball wallet to a user that doesn't even have a Byteball address yet. Uh, that's definitely not possible with any other wallets I've seen. 
uh, some are beginning to, to pick up and, and to some extent copy uh, the Byteball idea here. Uh, but Byteball was uh, actually the first to, to introduce this possibility. What it actually does is to it creates a contract and it says anyone who has a given key or a seed will be able to claim the funds on this contract. This means that you can send any type of token or funds uh, from your own wallet to anyone in the world simply by using a messaging app. It can be sent via email or through Messenger or Facebook or whatever type of, of messaging uh, app you prefer. You do have to be aware that a text coin is actually just like a, a note of money. Uh, if you leave a note of money on the street, the first one to pick up that note will be the new owner of those money. So you need to be aware that the receiver of that text coin is actually who you intend to give the funds to. Um, so, so make sure that uh, it, it, it gets delivered to the recipient and uh, preferably not uh, on some social media platform or as a comment in a YouTube video because that will be claimed probably by someone else uh, first. It's super easy uh, and again there's been a, a brief video created to show you how this works. <clears throat> and again, I don't think we have audio from the actual video, so I'll just uh, walk you through it. It shouldn't be too difficult. Again, you start by clicking the send button. And you simply just type in the email as a text coin. You can now send it as email or you can just copy the text below and the recipient will see that message. If the user doesn't have a Byteball wallet installed, the link of the text coin will automatically prompt the user to install a wallet. Obviously, a user cannot claim uh, Byteball uh, bytes before they have a wallet to put it in. So the first thing that will happen when you click uh, a text coin link is that if you don't have the app uh, or the wallet, it will automatically start downloading uh, and request you to, to install the wallet. As soon as the wallet is downloaded and installed, um, you can see here on the video, you open up the, the wallet. And wait accept the terms of use give your account a name this is Bobby's wallet this is actually what uh, a, a freshly installed wallet uh, will look like so now you can see you have zero bytes in your wallet, but as soon as it is finished syncing, it will actually have the bytes contained in the text coin. It will be transferred to the, the wallet. This works also with your own tokens. You can send whatever currency or asset uh, is available on the Byteball platform to any other user using these text coins. You're a millionaire. Excellent. <laughs> Great. So let's move on to the next. Chatbots. Uh, these are basically the apps uh, that uh, the Byteball platform has to offer. Uh, bots are uh, a way to, to have the platform or the wallet interact with the user in a friendly way. It can create links that the user clicks. It can create various uh, logic. It's like um, integrating the user's wallet with some external piece of code. Uh, you have users interacting with the bot. There's a, a, 
a so-called bot store in uh, right in the wallet usually uh, already contains about 25 bot um, one of the recently created bots is the World Community Grid linking bot, allowing users to link their Byteball wallets to World Community Grid user accounts. Uh, Byteball has a, a reward for people providing their uh, idle processing time to, to this project. If you haven't heard about it, you should definitely Google it. It's a, a super, super great project. Um, it also has sports betting bots, uh, making uh, this creation of smart contracts between two parties uh, automated. It's, it's super user friendly. It has uh, free faucets, uh, meaning that you can basically just add this free faucet bot uh, and request delivery of some tokens. The tokens that you will get are worthless, uh, you can't sell it on exchanges, but it'll be super useful to use as a means of testing stuff. Uh, there's also actual exchange bots uh, allowing you to actually trade some of the Byteball tokens uh, or any other issues uh, tokens issued on the Byteball platform directly from within the user wallet. There's also recently been uh, a new addition. It's uh, an opportunity for users to directly from within the wallet actually purchase the, the Byteball uh, native currency called Bytes uh, directly with a credit card from within the wallet. So Byteball is uh, gradually moving away from being dependent on the large exchanges as uh, most of the other cryptocurrencies are currently uh, heavily relying on. Um, Byteball is aiming to actually provide an, an infrastructure to, to exist on its own. These bots are, of course, very popular as a means to create contracts uh, with these complex rules in, in an easy and user-friendly way. Uh, it isolates uh, the user from the complexity going on underneath, so to speak. Um, to show it how it works, uh, there's another video here. And again, I'd be surprised if this one has sound. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, but I'll try to walk you through it just like I did with the other ones. As you can see here, we have a custom token called a Singo, a Tingo. The user then goes into the chat. As you can see, you have two tabs at the top, a bot store, and he adds the fun coins, fun coins faucet. And you simply click a link and say, I would like to receive 12,000.77 Singos. The bot then asks, what address should I send those to? There's an easy way to insert addresses, so you won't have to remember those long codes. And the payment goes through. That's just one way of using these bots. Uh, it shows how you can automate some of the stuff uh, that might otherwise be a bit complex. Uh, the wallet is actually super user-friendly. You, you don't have to remember or copy-paste these long addresses. You can simply click and choose to insert your, uh, your wallet's address. So I'm pretty sure that during the course of this usathon, you will be experts at creating these bots or at least using it. We'll just move on and skip the video. It's a bit boring without the sound. Uh, the last thing I will talk about uh, briefly, it's uh, the, the ICO tools of the Byteball platform. <clears throat> an ICO is uh, an initial coin offering. Uh, it's, it's made to raise funds for new cryptocurrency projects before they become actual projects. Uh, you've probably heard of it uh, in the media and, and uh, from other various sources. But ICOs are a very good ways to, to raise funds to fund your projects. Uh, Byteball is actually a platform allowing issuing of, uh, of these ICOs. These tokens, just like any other tokens, can be restricted in, in more or less ways that you want. 
uh, and one of the very important parts uh, that you can restrict uh, an, uh, a token is by only allowing it to be bought by an accredited investor. There's been a lot of uh, fuss in the media about uh, the SEC uh, in the USA having uh, they might or might not have uh, homed in on Ethereum to to deem their ICO an illegal sell uh, distribution of a security token. Uh, and to be able to buy securities, you sh need to be an accredited investor. Byteball actually have uh, attestation bots that allows you to actually I attest that you are an accredited investor. It also allows uh, a normal user to, to uh, attest their identity. What happens when you attest your identity is that you provide your identity details to uh, a, a, an identity authenticator called Jumio. Uh, it's the same that's used by eBay and various uh, bed and breakfast sites and sports betting sites. Um, and whenever your uh, identity paper is uh, approved, what happens is that your user identity is stored in your wallet. It's not stored by Byteball. The only thing available on the Byteball database is the hash value of your identity. So this means that you and only you will be uh, in possession of your own identity. You don't share it with, with any third party. When another party wants to uh, check that, uh, let's say it's a betting site and you need to be uh, uh, more than 18 years old to, to uh, place a bet on their site, uh, what they would do is request you to reveal part of your identity. Uh, they only need to know that you are at least 18 years of age. They don't need to know really your first name or last name or where you live or what country you're from. Uh, and you can always, with the Byteball platform, choose which parts of your identity you want to reveal. So you could reveal that you are born in whatever year you are born in, 1977 for, for my uh, uh, sake. Uh, and what the, the receiver of this identity information is able to do is to take that piece of information and validate it by checking if it's contained in the hash value that was stored in the database. Um, they don't know any other details and you won't have to reveal any other details. It's super clever design. Um, you should uh, check that out. Another form of attestation is uh, an email attestation. And while we are talking about that, uh, at this point in time, you should actually already have received an email from the uh, uh, the student council at your university that the Byteball community uh, has decided to uh, reward all students of the, the Simon Bolivar University a $10 reward for attesting their email. This also allows one user to send uh, bytes to another user by simply by sending it to the user's email. You'll have to forgive the birds outside. It's uh, it's a bit noisy. Um, that's uh, about it. Uh, what I wanted to say about the attestation. Uh, if you have any questions about how to to claim the ten dollars worth of bytes uh, by attesting your email, please contact the the student council. They will be able to provide the help you need. So, what is it we actually want? Uh, from you in this Byteball usathon. Well, as you have seen, there's a vast number of features already available on the pl Byteball platform. Uh, and if you look at it like a, a huge box of Legos, uh, it's, it's, it's not interesting as small bricks. But when you put it together and form these beautiful models, things become a lot more interesting. And this is actually what we're aiming to do here with this usathon. We want you to build the huge models. We want you to take all the Legos in the box, uh, put it together in new ingenious ways, new creative ways, and in ways that will actually solve a, pro a real world problem. Whether it's uh, developing a way for uh, a local merchant to be able to accept the bytes as payment, or uh, people on a market be able to exchange groceries, 
by using bytes or it can be whatever you, you really think of. There's a few examples here what you could choose to, uh, to use for your projects, uh, personal oracles, smart contracts, timestamp oracles, text coins, attestation and so on and so forth. Uh, we really don't want to limit your creativity or your innovation skills. Um, try to surprise us, but make sure that what you suggest is actually viable in a real-world scenario. It has to have some kind of uh, financial sustainability, and you have to prove that it's actually uh, a plausible idea to actually implement in the real-world use case you provide. The rules will explain to you how to, to hand in your projects, how to sign up as a team. Uh, and of course, throughout this project period, the, the uh, community uh, of Byteball will provide all the help you will need. There won't be any private help available. All the, the help we provide on the Byteball Slack uh, will be, of course, visible to anyone. So it's not like uh, there's, there's any secrets or any Byteball uh, community members helping one team more than another. You're also welcome to, to ask questions or can't get in contact or uh, interact with other uh, participants in this Byteball usathon. Uh, I recommend you to, to uh, get in touch with your student council. Uh, they have been super helpful so far in helping us getting this contest uh, on, f on the wings. Um, and our hope is, of course, this contest will just be the initial start of something way bigger. Uh, once the contest is over, the winners are announced uh, and the prizes are paid out to, to the winners. Uh, our hope is that this platform will actually be able to provide you and your local communities with solutions to, to real-world problems that you for some reason might have or that you just didn't know was, uh, was possible to solve at this point in time. So with that, I'll just leave the stage to everyone here. Find a couple of innovative fellow students, brainstorm a bit, be creative, be innovative, uh, and you can sign up directly with the FCE USB, or you can visit La Casita, I think it's called, uh, to ask any questions you might have. So thank you for listening, and as a final slide, these are the links that you definitely should visit. We really hope that this contest will be as exciting as we believe it will be uh, and we hope that you have enjoyed this video if you have any questions always feel free to ask we are always almost always there to help you thank you and thanks for listening <laughs>